While adventuring in the woods, you and your party are beset by a masked highwayman. He says, stand and deliver. Your first thoughts are, oh no! Your second thought is, wow, that's a really good mask. Seeming to sense your thoughts, the highwayman says, like it, I made it myself. And I'm going to show you how to make one here on Kellogg's Castle. everybody everything we have to make this half mask right here is on this table I have my pattern I have my scissors and a marker to go ahead and transfer that pattern onto my EVA foam I like to use quarter inch foam uh, you can see it's a little bit thicker than the craft foam you can find at uh, Michael's AC Moore or your local craft store and then I also have Weldwood contact cement. I love my contact cement, especially when I'm working with EVA foam or any kind of craft foam. It's a great way to get those pieces to uh, go on ahead and fit together nice and beautiful and create great seams, good seams. Um, uh, let's go on ahead and, uh, oh, I also have a timer up here. That'll be important for my contact cement, but we'll get to that in a bit. The first thing I want to do is I want to give myself a nice working space so I can transfer the amazing pattern that is down below onto my EVA foam. And this is where I really want to sit down and think about the ec economy of space. So I want to make sure I'm in a wonderful area where I can just lay the pattern down, get these amazing lines all traced onto my EVA foam. Now what's really important about this side right here are these curve cuts. These curve cuts are what actually give you this dome kind of shape. It takes your two-dimensional object and converts it into this three-dimensional dome. If you've never worked with EVA foam before, you, uh, you might want to take a little bit of time to play around with that, um, simply because you will find that playing with curve cuts and different ways that uh, foam actually lines up is quite a challenge at times. These are actually pretty easy because they're just going from the inside to the outside. Uh, there are some that get a little bit more complicated if you do other patterns such as uh, things from Evil Ted or Bill Duran. Both of them are an amazing foam smiths uh, in the world of cosplay and movies and other things like that. But all I'm doing right now is transferring these patterns onto here. But these are very important because I need these to be the mirror image. So what I like to do is I like to look at where I've actually put my originals and I flip them directly below, making sure I get the opposite side of my pattern. And we are all good once I trace these out. I will go on ahead and then I will cut these out with the pair of scissors that I had before. Because this is nice thin foam, I don't need to worry about trying to cut it with anything really elaborate. And also, EVA foam is a little forgiving. I can cut it with scissors and be all good to go. But, right there, woo, is my pattern ready to go and be cut out. I will go on ahead now and cut out these pieces, and we will go on ahead and uh, talk about how to put them together and actually construct them. Here we go, let's see. Okay, I have cut out all my pieces. There they are, ready to go in all of their glory. And I can turn them so all of the blue sides are showing. You can see my marks. I cut to the inside of the lines because uh, that is where my pattern actually lines up. And I wanna be careful that that's what I'm doing. And the next step is why I have these wonderful blue nitrate gloves on. This, uh, this part is actually going to be where we take our contact cement and we apply it. Now, contact cement is a beautiful substance. It is a little dangerous as it is highly flammable, so keep it away from open flames and make sure you have a well-ventilated area to use it. But uh, you want to make sure also that you have something to protect your hands because getting it on your fingers is kind of like getting super glue on there and it's a pain to get off. So make sure you protect yourself when using this material. 
Um, this guy, what you're gonna do first is you're gonna wanna glue these kerf cuts and then along the top edge here. And the beauty of contact cement is as soon as it touches contact cement, it needs to bond two surfaces to itself. As soon as it touches, boom, it is there. There is no redo. You get one shot. But it's one of the strongest bonds you will find out there when you're trying to adhere two pieces together. Also really good for trying to create curves because you don't have to sit there with super glue and hold it. You touch it, it's done, and a curve is there. Over the next seven days, the contact cement will get stronger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this guy up and I'm gonna just take my glue brush and I am going to start applying the glue. If I get a little extra, I like to, personally, I like to wipe it off and just kind of use it on the next one. So that's perfectly fine. If you get a little extra mixed around in there, it's okay. You can also bend your foam to kind of really get a good part into it. Before you have to uh, wait 10 minutes before it actually starts to stick, um, which is why we have our wonderful timer. But as soon as that 10 minutes is up, as soon as we touch them, they're gonna bond together. Uh, so, I am going to apply a generous helping of contact cement to all parts. Um, EVA foam soaks up a little bit of it, so you wanna make sure you get that. Got my kerf cuts, and I've also got my bottom line, which will connect into these, and I wanna look at how these pieces are gonna to fit together and put glue there. So I wanna glue across the top of these pieces, the inside of this piece, and the inside of these pieces right there. So I'm gonna real quick just glue that up real fast. And I'm, I'm very messy with my, um, with my builds, so I get a lot of fun time to sit there and clean it up with sandpaper and a Dremel. Because you'll wanna go ahead and you'll wanna sand these seams if you don't get them nice and clean, but we'll talk about seams in just a second. I want to put some right in there to make sure I've got a nice, healthy lathering right there. This is a great time to sit down and look at two-dimensional shapes becoming three-dimensional shapes. Um, if we look at the way in which some of the curves right here, this curve in here, actually becomes the place where the nose will sit. So it's kind of like a protrusion, and you see that in a two-dimensional object that suddenly will become a three-dimensional one. And it's a lot of fun to see how all these shapes kind of come together. And look, I'm just chit-chatting with you. And look, we all pretty good because we're getting this stuff locked, loaded, ready to go. Ha ha. And there we go. Absolutely wonderful. I have glued all of my sides. And now for this part. I've set my timer to 10 minutes. I like to give my contact cement plenty of time to go on ahead and dry and that way I know I have nothing to worry about. It is dry and it will be perfectly fine. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up this timer and let it sit there. All right, cool. My timer has gone off. Just put that off to the side, and now my contact cement should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and take this brush and get that out of the way too. Now, it's probably still just going to be a little sticky on the underside, but I'm going to tap this. Contact cement, you want to go ahead and be able to touch it and pull away a little bit and it not really stick to you. That means it's soaked all the way into the material that you have and you've gone on ahead and got a good bond with the material. So now when you stick the contact cement together, it's going to be final. One word, the better you do your seams while you're actually pressing them together, the less work you're gonna have on the back end, sanding, smoothing, and filling in any little gaps and holes. So if I take my time, really focus on this, maybe make two or three to kind of get the experience of putting one together and to then get one of the, that's a really good quality, I get an amazing mask. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with my kerf, my kerf cuts, and I'm just gonna gently press these together. Boop. That's it right there. Contact cement is wonderful. I just wanna make sure I'm really paying attention to how I'm putting these guys together. And boom, and you can already see there's that curve that I'm talking about. That's what's literally created off of that. I do a little bit of heat gun treatment on this or heat it up with a hair dryer, and it'll actually start to give me a bit more of a bend. I can press in 
and this little guy here, which looked like a, it was popping out just a little bit. But what I like to do is I like to do my dome first, and then I like to do each side. Now this is tricky, because if I take these and I put these directly together, they don't actually line up. They kind of bend in on one another. Again, that's gonna give us that shape. Best to bend out of the way one of your pieces, and you're just lining up end to end, and that's it. That's all you're doing. Press them together, and we're good. Now I've got to bend this guy a little bit, and pull him to kind of press him into place. And it also looks like I've got to squeeze the foam up here to make contact on this shorter end. But again, if you look at that, that's starting to create a curve back this way. When I match that up with this, it's gonna be absolutely wonderful. I know I probably just gave some of you like a, a, a really concern there, bringing it so close to this and getting it stuck. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm. <laughs> If it gets stuck, it gets stuck, and I, I shoot again. Uh, I'm gonna take this guy, do the same thing. I'm gonna just apply that, boom, stick it, it's done. A little bit of pressure to just get it to hold still. And then I do the same thing here. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure to make that happen. Now, my trick is this, putting these two pieces together. I personally like to go on ahead and match my top and my bottom to make sure that I'm good. And then I'm just pressing this center seam all the way together, and that line right there makes the nose from my mask. You can see right there that curve that's created, and it also gives me that nice curve to the mask, so when I put this on my face, we're all good. Although it's really dirty on the underside, you have to clean that before I do anything with it. Now the fun part. These two pieces should match up perfectly. So all I gotta do is match end to end, and we're all good. So I'll take this piece, line it up there and really try to get my foam nice and smooth and the really good part of this is if I get my center kerf here and my center seam to line up I know I'm right on the money for actually making this mask making it work well. Now here's a fun thing that happened. It didn't line up at the very end. If I press these two together, they don't work. But I can bend this foam, I can kind of pull it, I can bend it around to match up, and come back in and really press the seam to kind of make it work. And I can heat gun any little bulge or anything that I get out from that, and I just go back across, press my seams. If you're having trouble pressing your seams, and you're like, oh, it's not working, take your mask, and invert it, press it the other way. So all of those lines don't really match up because they're meant to curve a specific way, but if you flip them to their opposite, they will actually press together and press together with a little bit of force, and when you flip it back, it's ready to go. There you go, folks, that's it. It's that kind of simple, and you get a little bulge in there, you can sand that down, you can do anything you need to, but you can kind of see the finished product of the half mask as it was just built half mask right now. And now I got this whole thing and I can just do whatever I want to. I can put anything on it or fun stuff like that. Or I, uh, I actually have one over here. Hold on for just a second. A little impromptu planning here. But this is what I'm working on for a goblin mask. It's got a little bit of shaping and it needs some detail and sanding and paint. But this is what I'm kind of working on. Maybe I'll do a video on how to craft one of these from the base. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks so much. And that's how you can make your own EVA foam mask. And I went on ahead and covered mine in Warbla. And you can go on ahead and give it any kind of foam treatment after that and make it look like anything. Once you have the base, you can build from there. Uh, wait a second. Where were we? Oh, right. I do believe I was about to take all your coin.